Welcome to the Barons. This is Bunny, and for today's topic, we're going to be discussing Unit 731. Unit 731 is one of the most horrific and unethical facilities in history. This took place during the Second Sino-Japanese War of World War II from 1937 to 1945. This facility was led secretly by Japanese General Shiroishi. Covertly, it was named a lumber mill and then a water purification plant. In reality, it was meant to act as a chemical and biological warfare testing facility, where they tested lethal and highly immoral procedures on captives in Manchukuo, China. The Japanese set their unit in the Pinfeng district of Harbin, and believing the Chinese to be inferior, took many of them captive, along with other prisoners of war like Russians, Mongolians, and Koreans. These people were held as test subjects, where the Japanese referred to them as logs, or maruta, in Japanese. And it was here that Japanese doctors and surgeons would dissect people alive, as well as perform vivisections, and because they did not want anything to interfere with their results, no anesthesia was given. They also frequently infected people with different types of afflictions, watching the effects it took on their bodies. The bacterial diseases in which they spread included plague, anthrax, dysentery, typhoid, paratyphoid, cholera, and many others. Gangrene was also forced onto people where the effects were studied. Ishii then had clay bombs created with oxygen inside where 30,000 fleas could be stored per bomb. These were to be dropped onto locations where they could infect large populations. Why pestis was added to wheat, rice, and cotton along with pieces of paper that would be dropped from planes. If contact with an infected flea, rat, or crop happened, it would infect the individual. Prisoners were also infected with STDs where they were then forced to have sex with healthy prisoners to infect them, as well as to study how the viruses were spread, mainly syphilis. Female prisoners were assaulted, made to get pregnant, and then were tested on or injected with syphilis. To make matters worse, one woman was nearly full term with her pregnancy when they cut her open from the throat to the lower abdomen, all while she was still completely awake and lucid. Prisoners were also injected with animal blood or made to share cells with contagious individuals to see the effects and how infectious conditions were, as well as to observe the clotting process and blood transfusions. Organs were removed while people were alive after being infected so they could study the organs before decay set in. They would also study blood loss by amputating limbs where they would oftentimes attach them to other parts of the body. Frostbite was also studied by means of exposing prisoners to cold temperatures in order for them to get frostbitten and then seeing how long they could survive it. They would also freeze arms and stiff ice before dunking them into a vat of hot water. The flesh would melt from the bone all while the prisoner was still alive. Pressure chambers were used also to see how much the body could take. They would see how much pressure it took before the eyes popped out of their sockets. In 1984, a graduate student in Tokyo discovered records of human experiments in a bookstore. It described the effects of tetanus and how long it took for the victim to die while also recording the spasms of their body. A man named Takeo Wano, once a medical worker in Unit 731, claimed to have seen a six-foot-tall glass jar with a dissected man preserved in formaldehyde. They also took groups of prisoners out onto a firing range where they opened fire from different ranges with different weapons to study the effectiveness, wound patterns, and penetration depths. And if this weren't enough, they also had gas chambers set up where they would test gases on the prisoners or use blistering agents. In 1995, a former Unit 731 medical assistant told the New York Times, The fellow knew that it was over for him, and so he didn't struggle when they led him into the room and tied him down. But when I picked up the scalpel, that's when he began screaming. I cut him open from the chest to the stomach, and he screamed terribly, and his face was all twisted in agony. He made this unimaginable sound. He was screaming so horribly, but then he finally stopped. This was all in a day's work for the surgeons, but it really left an impression on me because it was my first time. One website I visited when researching this topic called allthatisinteresting.com claims that the Japanese were trying to engineer the most deadly and infectious of diseases so they would infect their prisoners and the ones that were sickest would be bled out and then the blood would be used in a new subject. I couldn't find this source anywhere else, so I cannot attest to the authenticity, but if that were true, which I don't have trouble believing, then that is something really horrendous. 
And these aren't even all of the atrocities that occurred during those terrible years in Unit 731. Not to mention the fact that much of what went on there was either destroyed or kept secret. So, what was the purpose of Unit 731? Well, there are different reasons. One of the reasons for human experimentation was to try and develop cures for medical issues that the Japanese army faced. Another main reason for their tests was to try and improve their biological and chemical warfare, as they had planned to use these methods in the war. It was also intended to understand human conditions and how much the body could withstand, but any way you try and slice it, it was cruel. At least 3,000 people died there, but the numbers could be much higher. And the truth of the matter is that no one really knows the full extent of experimentation that happened at Unit 731, aside from the very few survivors and doctors. When it was clear that they were going to lose the war, they destroyed most of the evidence. The people who were imprisoned were gassed, and those that managed to survive the gassing were burned alive. No one from Unit 731 was punished for their crimes. General Douglas MacArthur granted them immunity in exchange for the information they gathered. So, the Chinese decided to bring the atrocities to life by building a museum over where Unit 731 once stood. Since then, there have been people who have participated or managed to escape alive that have given accounts of the horrors they witnessed. But many people chose to stay silent. In recent years, Japan has released the names of most of the members of Unit 731. This is probably one of the most horrendous historical events I've ever read about. I can't imagine the pain and suffering those poor people had to endure. But that wraps up this episode. I want to thank you for joining me in the Barrens, and if you have any more information or tales about Unit 731, please leave a comment down below. This is Bunny signing off. Until next time. Bye.